Welcome back. Today, let's talk about Planned Parenthood. Specifically, we're going to talk about the 3% myth or claim that they make that only 3% of what they do is abortions. We're going to talk about that and see if we can come up with a more accurate measurement just looking at the data that they provide. All that being said, before we get started, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can stay informed and always get the sources that I leave down below in the description. Let's do this. So if you're on the right or on the pro-life side, whenever you hear about Planned Parenthood, you probably think about or equate it with abortion. Now, they like to, and as I'll explain in a little bit, say that abortion is only 3% of what they do or a very small portion. But it's not entirely inaccurate to, to relate them to abortion. For example, Planned Parenthood performs somewhere in the realm of 300,000 abortions every single year. When you compare that to the total number of abortions in the United States, which is about 900,000, they are responsible for about one third. So one organization is responsible or performs one third of the total abortions in the entire United States. That is a pretty significant number in my view. Now, all that being said, Planned Parenthood often puts out this claim that abortions are only about 3% of the services that they offer. And they do so in their annual report where they send out this par chart thing and it shows that abortion services is a very small percentage of what they offer. Now, while this is technically true, it is extraordinarily misleading and it doesn't tell the whole story. Let me show you what I mean by that. So in order to get that figure, what they do is they look at how many abortions they perform, which again is around 330,000, and they compare that to the total number of services they perform, which is almost a million. So if you take the number of abortions and you divide it by the total services, you are going to get about 3%. And that's where this 3% continually comes from. But as I said, that's not a very good statistic to use. So what's wrong with this number is that Planned Parenthood intentionally decouples every service related and leading to an abortion as an attempt to deflate the importance of abortion in what they do. So to kind of explain that, let's, let's just think of a scenario where there is someone who goes into a Planned Parenthood because they want to get an abortion. So that is their reason for going, is to get an abortion. Before they do that, they're going to have a pregnancy test done, some form of blood work or STI testing, an ultrasound, which will determine the gestational age of the fetus, which is important because that determines the abortion procedure as well as how much they would have to pay for it. And then if no other tests are required or ordered, they will then be able to get an abortion, right? So in this particular case, this person came in, had three services done before the abortion, and then the abortion itself. It's important to note, though, that those three services were required to happen before the abortion could happen. Regardless, Planned Parenthood would look at that and using their counting of services, they would say, even though they came in for an abortion, an abortion is only one of the four things that they did while they were here. And so we'll just say that an abortion was only 25% of, of what they did, 25% of their visit. Now, you can obviously see that that's misleading because if they didn't come in for the abortion, they would not have gotten the other three tests. It's not that they chose to get those tests, it's that it had to be done to lead to the abortion. It's so misleading, in fact, that it is constantly, constantly being debunked. So it was debunked by Snopes and PolitiFact and uh, Washington Post, in fact, gave it three Pinocchios. If you're not familiar with how Washington Post does their fact checking, they basically range it from zero to four Pinocchios. The more misleading or untrue the claim is, the more Pinocchios you get. So three Pinocchios from the Washington Post means that, well, you did something way wrong and it's not even close to being true. So again, Washington Post is no friend of, of the conservatives, but they even said that this is untrue. And the part that I guess really cements the fact that it's an intentional ploy, an intentional act by Planned Parenthood, is that if you look at the years that, um, for example, Washington Post debunked this claim back in 2015, so you know a whole four years ago, and yet just last year, in 2017 to 20, 2018, Planned Parenthood released their annual report in which they made the exact same claim. They again claimed that abortion was only now 3.4% of all of their services. So again, it's not that they're doing this unintentionally, they're doing this for the very reason that it makes it seem like abortion is less of the reason people come than what it actually is. Let's see if we can find a more accurate number. Instead of comparing the number of abortions to the number of total services performed at Planned Parenthood, if instead 
we compare it to the number of patients, which is about 2.4 million in the 2017-2018 annual report, we find that about 14% of Planned Parenthood patients received an abortion. So I feel like that number is a more accurate measurement of the importance of abortion to Planned Parenthood. In fact, it's actually four times larger than the 3% number that they like to put out. As a disclaimer, the downside of this is it counts every patient and gives them equal weight. Meaning if there is a patient who goes to Planned Parenthood three or four times in that year, and one of those times got an abortion, that is counted the same as someone who only went to Planned Parenthood once for an abortion. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad number. I'm just putting that disclaimer out there as one of the reasons that sometimes those on the side, I guess, of Planned Parenthood disagree with that statistic. Everything we've done up to this point did not include or take into account the cost of an abortion. So now if we do that, we're going to see our numbers change a little bit. For example, the average cost of an abortion, we can say is about $500, which is given from a source down below. And it's a little bit difficult to determine. So this number is a little bit iffy because it changes based on not only location, but also you know, how pregnant you are and how far in the pregnancy. But we're going to go with $500. So if we take that and we multiply it by the total number of abortions, we end up with $166 million. So that means that every year, Planned Parenthood receives $166 million just from abortions. That is a pretty significant number. Now, if you compare that to the total revenue that they have in a year, you find that it's about 10%. Now, while this number, does, it's, it's not a huge number, it's still significantly larger than the 3%, right? It's three times that. So every single year, Planned Parenthood receives 10% of its total revenue from abortion. And that revenue includes things like government funding, as well as private contributions and charity and, and things of that nature. This number to me is a little bit low. So sometimes what other people do is they exclude everything besides the non-government health services. So they say, if we just look at how much money they got from other services and we compare that to abortion, we end up with 45%. Now, while this number is higher, so you may like to use it, I do not think it's that accurate because it's excluding the government funding. And it's important to note that the majority of government funding that Planned Parenthood receives is not just through Title X, it's actually through reimbursements through Medicaid. So I do not think this is an accurate number to use, but I also don't think the 10%. So it's somewhere in between there. Out of all of those percentages that we just looked at, which do you think is the most important or rather the most truthful? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below if it's the 3% or the 14 or the 10 or the 45, whatever it is, and then let me know why you think that's the case. I, I really want to get feedback on this to see which percentage you all agree with. So go ahead and do that. Leave a like because it really helps YouTube to promote this video. And again, if you haven't subscribed and you've made it this far, go ahead and subscribe. I'm sure you'll like the other stuff that I do. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.